the finest martial talent to exist in the Three Kingdoms era. Among men, Lu Bu. Among steeds, Red Hair. The exceptionally mighty warrior was also notorious for his unstable behaviour. He would switch allegiances erratically, which in turn led to him being unable to control those under him. There are no descriptions of Lu Bu's physical appearance in historical records, but it's noted he possessed a great physical strength with supernatural arm power and specialised in archery and horse riding. Although he was a valiant and powerful warrior, he lacked wisdom and was constantly suspicious of others. He was unable to control his subordinates even though he trusted them. They had their personal motives and they were disunited, which is why he kept losing battles. He possessed the might of a tiger and good leadership, but he lacked the planning skills of a talented person. Frivolous and temperamental by nature, he was mostly only concerned about himself and the gains he could make. Throughout history, there had never been such people like him who did not end up being destroyed. Liu Bu was from Ji Yuan County, Wu Yuan Commandery, where he became known for his martial valour all throughout Bing Province. Before he was well employed by Ding Yuan, the minister over the masses Wang Yun treated Liu Bu with full courtesy for his superior strength over all others in Bing. When Ding Yuan was appointed as a cavalry commandant and sent to garrison at Hainei Commandery by the Han government, he recruited Liu Bu as a registrar. When they met, he was greatly impressed, so he treated Liu Bu kindly and kept him close to his side. Ding Yuan also heard of Zhang Liao's combat skills around this time, and hired him as an assistant officer. After the death of Emperor Ling, He Jin called in the regional warlords for assistance in eliminating the troublesome eunuch faction. Ding Yuan ordered Zhang Liao to lead troops to the imperial capital, where He Jin sent him on a mission to Hebei to recruit even more men. Ding Yuan followed along to Luoyang in May of 189, but by the time he arrived, a power struggle had occurred at the court. He Jin and the eunuchs all ended up dead, whilst Dong Zhuo seized the military control. He ruled with an iron fist, engaged in cruel acts, massacred entire clans, and imprisoned anyone who opposed him. Once they arrived, Dong Zhuo wanted to do away with Ding Yuan and take control over his regional troops, so he turned to convince Lu Bu to join him. Despite being a trusted man to Ding Yuan, Lu Bu killed his old master and presented his head to his new master as a token of introduction, or after he was rewarded as a cavalry commandant. Dong Zhuo placed much faith and trust in him. He took him in as his foster son, so became further promoted to a general of the household, whilst also being made a marquee of a village. Dong Zhuo's subsequent tyrannical behaviour aroused the wrath of many. Yuan Shao initiated the anti-Dong Zhuo coalition, where Lu Bu fought in battle against the allied forces. The next year, in a battle at Yang Ren, he fought alongside Hu Zhen against Sun Jian, but he was not on good terms with his colleague. He spread false rumours confusing the attack, so their army was heavily defeated, during which their commander Hua Xiong was killed in battle. Forced to retreat, Sun Jian seized the opportunity, so within months he had led the coalition forces to Luoyang. Dong Zhuo personally led an army to engage the vanguard in battle at the area where the past emperors were buried, but he was defeated and forced to retreat. Sun Jian then passed through the Xuan Yang Gate, where he attacked Lu Bu and drove him back once more. Dong Zhuo was so alarmed he pillaged, set fire to, and evacuated the city. The residents were forced to relocate to Chang'an, where the coalition forces did not pursue, and eventually dissolved by themselves the next year. Because Dong Zhuo was so brazen around others, he was afraid of being assassinated, hence he often kept Lu Bu by his side as a bodyguard. However, Dong Zhuo had a bad temper, and was easily agitated. During his outbursts, he threw short G's at Lu Bu, but he reacted fast and could dodge the weapons. Dong Zhuo would calm down eventually, but Lu Bu was very unhappy, so he held a grudge against his foster father. The minister over the masses Wang Yun would always receive the Marshal Lu Bu warmly because he was currently colluding with others to assassinate Dong Zhuo. Lu Bu was also tasked with guarding the living quarters in Harim, where he ended up having a secret affair with one of Dong Zhuo's maids. He feared it would be discovered and felt very uneasy about it. He went to see Wang Yun to complain about how Dong Zhuo had almost killed him, but there was another official named Shi Sun Rui there. They told Lu Bu about their plan to kill Dong Zhuo and sought his help, but he argued, We are father and son. Wang Yun convinced him by reminding him that his family name is Lu, and that there was no blood relation, plus Dong Zhuo was not concerned at all when Lu Bu almost died. In May of 192, Li Su helped Lu Bu by leading a dozen soldiers to pretend to stand guard near the entrance. Li Su tried to stab Dong Zhuo with a Ji when he came through the passage. The attack startled him, and he fell down from his chariot, but he always wore armour under his robes, so he was not mortally wounded. He quickly shouted, Where is Lu Bu? Once he emerged, he announced, Right here, we have an edict. The flying general ordered his troops to behead Dong Zhuo, and as they approached him, he scolded. Lowly Ker, you dare to act like this? 
Those were Dong Zhuo's last words in recorded history before his neck was struck by Lu Bu's blade. Wang Yun took control of the government acting as the regent and set about eliminating Dong Zhuo's loyalists. Zhang Liao served as one of Lu Bu's deputies, so became a cavalry commandant, but Wang Yun refused to grant amnesty to Dong Zhuo's followers from Liang province. Unforgiven for their past activities, they quickly gathered their armies and attacked him. Guo Si led his men to attack the city's north gate, where he met Lu Bu who told him, let's not send our soldiers into battle, instead, let's have a man-on-man -man fight. They engaged in a duel, but Guo Si fell back injured after he was saved by his soldiers. Both sides withdrew their forces for now, but Lu Bu was unable to assist the enemy in the long run. As they lost control over the city, he abandoned Chang'an and fled. His defeat and taking flight occurred somewhere around 60 days after Dong Zhuo's death. He abandoned his wife when he was fleeing from Chang'an, but his subordinate Pang Xu secretly protected her and returned her to Lu Bu later. He fled east to Nanyang to offer his service to Yuan Shu. Accompanied by a few hundred men and Dong Zhuo's head in the saddle, they made their way through Wu Pass. It's here that two alternate accounts exist, but the end result is the same, with Lu Bu ending up leaving and Dong Zhuo's head being delivered to Yuan Shu. In one version, Lu Bu is expected to be treated well because he destroyed Dong Zhuo, but he was actually detested for his duplicity, so has refused entry. The other claims Lu Bu was accepted and treated generously, but he became arrogant from his past deeds, so pillaged the area. Yuan Shu in turn became worried he had become a threat, and so grew suspicious of Lu Bu, who then left. He headed to northern China to join Yuan Shu's relative Yuan Shao, where he helped fight against Xiang Yan's 10,000 picked soldiers. To earn favour, he led his subordinates Cheng Lian and Wei Yui alongside dozens of riders into Changshan Commandery, where he launched raids into the enemy camps. It was during these battles that Lu Bu rode the famous steed Red Hair three or four times every day for ten days, raiding Zhang Yan, killing several enemies, then fighting their way back out. Following their frequent victories, Lu Bu had enlarged his troop size, which raised suspicion from Yuan Shao. The raids eventually whittled down their enemy and forced them to retreat. At the time, there was a saying to describe Lu Bu and his steed Red Hair. Among men, Lu Bu. Among the steeds, the Red Hair. Feeling arrogant and having slain Dong Zhuo, Lu Bu belittled Yuan Shao's followers, treated them with contempt, and even asked for more troops. When he was refused, he sent his men to plunder the surrounding land, so Yuan Shao felt he'd become a threat. Lu Bu in turn grew suspicious of him as well, so wanted to return to Liu Yang. Yuan Shao pretended to agree by recommending him to take up the appointment of Colonel Director of Retainers while secretly plotting to kill him. On the day of Lu Bu's departure, Yuan Shao had 30 armoured guards follow to escort him out. Along the journey, Lu Bu had stopped to rest in his tent, then that night, Yuan Shao's men snuck in and killed the man inside who was covered in a blanket. The next day, a messenger arrived to Yuan Shao to report that Lu Bu was still alive, so he immediately had the city gates closed. Lu Bu had secretly left his tent the previous night without anyone noticing and had ordered one of his men to remain inside as a decoy. After he escaped, he fled to Heinei Commandery to join Zhang Yan. Nevertheless, Yuan Shao sent his men to pursue him, but they all feared Lu Bu, so did not dare get close. On his way, he had passed by Chen Liu, where the administrator Zhang Miao received him warmly. He was noted for his gallantry and generosity, so many bold spirits were willing to work for him. He made a pleasure friendship with Lu Bu when he saw him off from Chen Liu, but this made Yuan Shao angry. Yuan was often criticised by Zhang Miao, and his ally Cao Cao refused to have him killed, despite Yuan Shao demanding that he do so. When Lu Bu arrived to Heinei, he learned that Zhang Yan and his subordinates had been bribed by Li Zhui and Guo Si to have him killed. He told Zhang, I'm from the same province as you. If you kill me, you'll become weaker. If you recruit me, you can obtain the same honours and titles as Li Zhui and Guo Si. Lu Bu was secretly granted refugee, whilst Zhang Yan pretended to agree with the plan, but when Li Zhui and Guo Si found out that Lu Bu had been accepted, they became worried, so appointed Lu Bu as the administrator of Yingchuan Commandery. Meanwhile, Cao Cao had left his base to attack Shu province, but Zhang Miao feared that he would one day combine forces of Yuan Shao to attack him. Then the next year, his younger brother Zhang Chao started a rebellion. Chen Gong, Xu Si and Wang Kai conspired together, with Chen Gong convincing Zhang Miao to join them in welcoming Lu Bu. Now the realm is being divided up by many warlords, your excellency has many territories and soldiers, only to be attacked from four sides. You're worthy of a paragon, not only to be controlled by others. Is it not a disgrace? Now Yanju City stands defenceless, thanks to most of the troops there being on the Eastern Campaign. Moreover, Lu Bu is valiant in combat. 
Now, welcome him to occupy the vulnerable city with us, bide our time and act according to the circumstance, and our great cause may be consummated. Letters were sent to the surrounding areas, which actually tipped Shun Yu off to the revolt, so he wrote to Shia Hadun for reinforcements. In his absence from his city, Lu Bu arrived, then seized control over Pu Yang with the help of the defectors, then declared himself his new governor. Many counties and commanderies responded to his call and defected to his side, except Yuan Cheng, Dong'e and Fan counties. When he received news of the rebellion, Cao Cao aborted his campaign, then led his forces back to Yan province. The armies clashed at Puyang, where both sides were locked in a stalemate for over a hundred days. The province suffered from famine at the time, so many had to resort to cannibalism to survive. Eventually, the influential Dian clan switched sides and opened the gates for Cao Cao. Lu Bu moved his base east to Shanyang Commandery, but within two years Cao Cao had recaptured all his territories, then he defeated Lu Bu in battle at Yi County. Forced to flee, he headed east to Shu Province to take shelter under Liu Bei. Upon his first meeting, he respectfully told Liu Bei, You and I are both from the northern borders. When I saw the Guangdong Coalition rising up, I already wanted to help them eliminate Dong Zhuo. However, after I slew him and left, none of the former members were willing to accept me. They even tried to kill me. He brought Liu Bei to his camp, then had him sit on his wife's bed as she paid respects to him. A feast was held to celebrate, where Lu Bu called Liu Bei his younger brother, but Liu knew he was untrustworthy, so only pretended to be friendly. The neighbouring Yuan Shu soon learned of their friendship, so tried to instigate Liu Bu to help him to deal with Liu Bei. In the past, Dong Zhuo monopolised state power, harmed the imperial family and murdered my family. I participated in the campaign against him, but did not manage to kill him. You slew the tyrant and sent me his head, in doing so, you helped me take revenge and salvage my reputation. This was the first favour you did me. Later, you attacked Cao Cao and Yan, and helped me regain my reputation. This was the second favour you did me. I am willing to entrust the matters of life and death to you, even though I may not be worthy. You have been fighting battles for a long time, so must be lacking food supplies. I hereby send you 200,000 hu of grain, and open my doors to you. I will continue to provide a steady flow of supplies, and if you need weapons and equipment, just ask. A marriage proposal was also agreed upon, where Lu Bu's daughter would be married off to Yuan Shu's son. A delighted Lu Bu soon received a letter from Tao Bao, a former officer under Dao Xian. For reasons unknown, Shang Fei wanted to kill him, so Tao Bao wrote to Lu Bu asking for help. Lu led his men 40 Li west of Xia Pi, where he went to meet up with the defector Xu Dan, a general of the household under Liu Bei. Shang Kuang was sent out one night to meet Lu Bu to tell him, Zhang Yai quarrelled with Cao Bao and killed him. The city is now in a state of chaos. There were a thousand soldiers from Dan Yang stationed at the West White Gate. When he heard of your arrival, they jumped for joy as if they had been revitalised. Lu Bu mobilised his troops that night and quickly reached the walls of Xia Pi, where the Dan Yang soldiers opened the West Gate for him. He sat on the viewing platform above the gate and instructed his troops to set fire to the city. They defeated Zhang Fei and his men in battle, then captured Liu Bei's family the families of his subordinates, and the majority of Liu Bei's supplies. Liu Bei immediately headed for Xia Pi, but most of his men deserted him along the way. He moved eastward to try to take Guangling, but Yuan Shu's forces saw that didn't happen, and defeated him there. In hunger and desperation, Liu Bei was forced to return to Liu Bu, who welcomed him, because Yuan Shu's supplies had still not reached him yet. When Emperor Xi'an was stranded in 195, he sent a written order to Liu Bu to lead an escort to come and rescue him. He had no supplies at the time, but sent a messenger in his stead. Then he became appointed as either General who pacifies the East, or General of the Left, plus granted a Marquis title. However, the emissary who was tasked with bringing the official seal back to Lu Bu lost it in Shanyang, so he could not take up his titles. Acting as Governor of Shu Province in 196, Lu Bu had a few domestic issues to deal with. He appointed a 27-year-old Zhang Liao as the Chancellor of Lu State. Despite technically a subordinate of Lu Bu, he was formally independent from him as he held office as a prefect of Beidi at that time. Hao Meng started a rebellion, then led his men to attack the headquarters office at Xia Pi. Because they were unable to break into the building, Lu Bu didn't learn of their identities, but he recognised their accents were from Hei Nei. He was bare-bodied and his hair was dishevelled when the attack occurred, but he managed to escape with his wife by climbing over the wall of a toilet. He fled to his most able officer Gao Shun's camp, who deduced that because of the Heinei accents, the rebel leader must be Hao Meng. Gao Shun then led his men to the office, and started firing arrows at Hao Meng's men, forcing them to retreat back to their camp. Once they got there, subordinate Cao Xing refused to betray Lu Bu further, so he turned against his superior and fought with him. 
During the fight, Hao Meng injured Tao Xing with a spear, but he left himself open, then had his arm cut off by a sword, ending the fight. Gao Xun arrived at this time to behead the traitor, then returned to Lu Bu. Tao Xing was put on a stretcher and sent to Xia Pi to meet with Lu Bu, who asked him, Hao Meng was instigated by Yuan Shu, who else was involved in the plot? Cao Xing replied, Chen Gong is an accomplice. At that time, Chen Gong was nearby and he gave an obvious angry expression when his name was mentioned. Lu Bu felt that Chen Gong was his key advisor, so he refused to believe the accusation. Cao Xing said, Hao Meng often urged me to rebel, but I said that you general are like a god and cannot be defeated. Unfortunately, Hao Meng refused to believe what I told him. Lu Bu then exclaimed, You are a true soldier. He praised him for remaining loyal and treated him well by placing him in charge of Hao Meng's men. Gao Xun, on the other hand, was trusted even less by Lu Bu after this incident. He was stripped of his commission, then had his troops reassigned to Lu Bu's relative Wei Shu. Whenever there was a battle, however, Gao would be reinstated. Despite this treatment, he remained eternally loyal and never bore a grudge against his lord. Later that year, Yuan Shu sent 30,000 troops to attack Liu Bei, so he asked Lu Bu for reinforcements. Lu Bu's generals urged him to make use of Yuan Shu in killing Liu Bei, but he replied, No, if Yuan Shu eliminates Liu Bei, he'll be able to build a network with the warlords in the north and I'll end up being encircled by them. He sent a thousand foot soldiers and 200 riders to help Liu Bei. When he heard of Lu Bu's approach, Yuan Shu's commanding officer Zhi Ling withdrew his forces and did not dare to make any move. Lu Bu set up a camp one li southwest of Xiao Pei, then invited Zhi Ling into the camp for a feast. The favour was returned, so Lu Bu also brought along Liu Bei and told Zhi Ling, Xuan Di is my younger brother. I heard that he was trapped by you gentlemen, so I came here to help him. I don't enjoy getting into conflicts, but I enjoy helping others resolve them. He had a Ji spiked in the ground at the gate of the camp and announced, Gentlemen, watch me fire an arrow at the lower part of the curved blade of the Ji. If I hit it in one shot, all of you must withdraw your armies and leave. If I don't, you can remain here and prepare for battle. Words still ring in the air. Lu Bu fitted the arrow to the bow, then drew back preparing to aim. A sure target. He raised his bow, then fired an arrow exactly at the lower part of the curved blade. Everyone present at the scene was shocked, until someone eventually spoke. General, you possess godlike skill. The following day, they reveled at a third and final feast, whereafter all parties involved withdrew their forces. When Yuan Shu declared himself emperor, he sent Han Yin to collect Lu Bu's daughter for the arranged marriage, but Chen Gui helped change his lord's mind. You, general, should work with Cao Cao instead for the peace at large, but your marriage-sealed alliance with Yuan Shu would reduce you to a dishonourable fellow, much to your detriment. Upon hearing this, Lu Bu recalled back to how Yuan Shu rejected him when he first sought shelter under him. Cao Cao personally wrote to Lu Bu to console him, where he mentioned his desires to defend the emperor, pacify the empire, and help eliminate Gong Xun Zan, Yuan Shu, Han Xian, Yang Feng and the others. Lu Bu became overjoyed, so he wrote two letters to Cao Cao's central government. The first was to Emperor Xi'an. I should have come to defend your majesty, but I've heard the loyal and filial Cao Cao has escorted you to the safety of the new capital. Earlier on, I fought battles with Cao Cao, and now he's come to defend your majesty. I'm a general outside the central government, so I feared that if I brought along my troops and followed to escort alongside Cao Cao, others may doubt my true intentions. As such, I chose to remain in Shu province and wait for your punishment for disobeying your order, but I did not dare make my own decision on whether to act or not. The second letter was to Cao Cao. I am guilty of disobeying the emperor's order and I deserve to be punished, however you comforted me and gave me encouragement. When I receive the decree to eliminate Yuan Shu, I will, with my life, I'll help execute his orders. Cao Cao sent Wang Zi as an emissary from the Emperor to deliver a letter and the official seal of the general who pacifies the East to reward Lu Bu. Cao Cao's letter read, The officials in Xiangyang offered a replacement for your official seal which was lost there. However, as the Imperial Treasury lacks gold reserves for making a new seal, I took the funds from my personal stores. The Treasury also lacks purple silk, so once more I allocated the funds from my personal stores. You are not making wise moves. Yuan Shu committed treason when he proclaimed himself emperor, so you should break all your connections with him. The imperial court trusts you, which is why they were willing to send you your commission again. You should prove your loyalty to the emperor. Lu Bu sent his men to retrieve his daughter, so they captured Han Ying and bound him to a wooden frame with chains. He was then sent as a prisoner to Cao Cao, who had him executed. When Lu Bu became appointed as general of the left, he sent Cheng Deng to go thank Cao Cao on his behalf. 
When they met, Chen Deng told Tao Tao that Lu Bu was bold but not astute, untrustworthy, so should be eliminated soon. In agreement, Chen Deng was secretly implanted by Tao Tao as a spy in Lu Bu's forces. Lu Bu was furious at Chen Deng when he returned, so he confronted him and brandished his spear, saying, Your father advised me to side with Tao Tao and reject Yuan Shu's offer. Now after following his advice, you've both been rewarded, whilst I receive nothing. You must have tricked me. What do you have to say? Lu Bu broke the corner off of a table with his halberd and cursed. Your father proposed the alliance with Tao Tao, leading to me breaking the marriage-sealed alliance with Yuan Shu. Now I am least benefited, while you and your father rise to power. I was took in. Tell me how you turned in good words for me when you met Cao Tao. Chen Deng remained calm and kept his composure as he explained. When I met Cao Tao, I told him, You should treat the general in the same way you raise a tiger. Feed it well with me. If it's not well fed, it will attack people. Cao Tao replied, You're wrong. He's like a hawk. If it's hungry, it will hunt for you. If it's well fed, it will fly away. After hearing this, Lu Bu's anger towards Chen Deng subsided. On the other hand, Yuan Shu was angered by Lu Bu's betrayal, so he sent Zhang Shen and Xia Rui to attack Xia Pi. In collaboration with the White Wave bandits led by Han Xian and Yang Feng, they assaulted the city from seven directions. Lu Bu asked Chen Gui, Yuan Shu sends his forces to attack me because I followed your suggestion. What should I do now? He replied, the alliance between Han Xian, Yang Feng and Yuan Shu is formed by a loose assembly of their forces. They have not decided on a common plan, so they will not last long. They are like chickens tied up together, and they cannot move in tandem. My son Deng has a plan to separate them. Lu Bu followed the plan to send Chen Deng to disintegrate the relations from within. Then he took countermeasures to bring the leaders of the White Wave bandits into the fold, so he sent a letter to them. You two generals escorted the emperor in Luoyang, while I personally killed Dong Zhuo. We have all accomplished deeds worthy of praise. Yuan Shu has committed treason, so everyone should attack him. Why do you side with the traitor instead and join him in attacking me? We should combine forces to defeat Yuan Shu, help the emperor eliminate the traitor and achieve glory. We should not lose this opportunity now. They were pleased, so agreed to help Lu Bu after he also promised to share the spoils of war with them. Yuan Shu's forces suffered heavy casualties as Zhang Shen was badly defeated at Xia Pi. Xia Rui became captured and many enemy soldiers fell into the river. Lu Bu led the three armies on a counterattack towards Xu Chun. Travelling on both land and water, they plundered the lands on the way and on the way back, making many gains. Lu Bu then left a letter for Yuan Shu before he crossed the Hua River back north. You think that your army is powerful and you always boast of having mighty warriors under your command. You wanted to destroy me, but why did you change your decision every time? I may not be courageous, but I have dominated the Huanan region within a short period of time, and you've become like a rat scurrying for shelter in Xu Chun you cannot even emerge from. Where are your mighty warriors? You enjoy telling lies to everyone, but you cannot make everyone believe you. Since ancient times, people have employed the techniques of sowing discontent between their enemies to overcome them. I'm not the first person to use this strategy. I'm still nearby, so I can wait for your response. Yuan Shu personally led 5,000 soldiers to the riverbank, where they witnessed Lu Bu's forces at the opposite end, laughing at them as they retreated. Around this time, the Chancellor of Langya Commandery, Xiao Jian, was stationed around Zhu County. He was a conservative man who did not have any contact with Lu Bu until he received a letter from him one day asking to make an alliance. Initially, everyone throughout the empire took up arms for the purpose of eliminating Dong Zhuo. I killed him and headed east, where I hoped to be able to borrow troops and return west to defend the emperor and restore the capital. However, the warlords were fighting among themselves, and none of them were concerned about the state. I'm from Wu Yuan, which is located more than 5,000 li away from Shu province in the northwestern border. As of now, I came here not to fight for the southeastern lands. Shu and Xia Pi are not far from each other, so it's easy to maintain communication between them. You behave like you are an emperor in a commandery and a king in a county. In the past, when Yue Yi attacked the Xi state, he conquered over 70 cities, except for two, because of Dian Dan. I am not Yue Yi, and neither are you Dian Dan. You can seek the counsel of wise men on this letter. After receiving this letter, Xiao Jian ordered Ji Jian to present five of their finest steeds as gifts to Lu Bu. Zhang Bao went on to defeat Xiao Jian, then seized possession of his treasure and provisions. He promised to present them to Lu Bu, but he renegated on his words, so Lu Bu wanted to go in person to ask for the goods himself, but Gao Xin advised. General, you've already earned widespread fame for killing Dong Zhuo. 
Your authority and reputation are known and respected everywhere. How can you ask for something and fail to obtain it? Yet you are going in person to beg for a present? If for some reason you are not successful, you will surely lose face. Even if you remain in your current position, those new and far will still be afraid of you. You shouldn't be so reckless as to personally lead your men into battle. If you lose, the damage to your reputation won't be minimal. Ignoring this advice, Lu Bu led his army anyway, but they were stopped by firm resistance by Zhang Ba. He remained inside Zhu County, which Lu Bu was unable to conquer by force, so he had to withdraw. The generals of the Daishan bandits included Zhang Ba, Sun Guan, Wu Dun, Yin Li and Shang Shi. They no longer listened to Lu Bu's orders, but Zhang Ba later made peace with him because his power was significantly stronger. Lu Bu then made the doomed decision to side for Yuan Shu once more over Emperor Xi'an. Gao Shun remonstrated Lu Bu once more, whose actions were seldom consistent. When you start something, you never think of the details. Whenever there is a choice between the way to success or the possibility of failure, you always make the wrong decisions. Gao went on and said, those who lost their homes and states do not do so because they lacked loyal ministers and wise advisers. They did so because they wouldn't listen to those men. General, you are reluctant to think things through carefully before you act, and thus you commit mistakes, which are too many to count. Lu Bu appreciated his loyalty, yet could not follow his advice. He sent the brigands Yang Feng and Han Xian to raid Liu Bei's supplies, but they were lured into a trap and defeated. Having failed, he then sent his soldiers to gather gold to buy some horses, but Liu Bei led his troops to attack them and stole his resources. The coming battle at Pei Chang, where Gao Shun and Zhang Liao defeated Liu Bei and Xia Hadun, led to Cao Cao officially launching his invasion of Xia Pei. This whole ordeal was one of Cao Cao's plots, but he much desired Chu province. He had placed two spies in Lu Bu's camp to sow discord between Lu Bu, Liu Bei and Chen Gong. These spies became the left and right advisers to Lu Bu and told him to attack Liu Bei. This was all against the advice of Chen Gong. A letter arrived explaining the benefits of surrendering, but Chen Gong and the others knew that they had already offended Cao Cao by betraying him. Those who surrendered to Cao Cao after rejecting an initial call from him would not be spared. They convinced Lu Bu to change his decision to surrender, and Chen Gong told him, We should attack the enemy now, since our troops have rested well while the enemy is weary. We're sure to win. Lu Bu replied, why don't we wait for them to attack first? After that, we'll destroy them at the Sea River. Cao Tao's attacks kept increasing in intensity as Xia Pi eventually became surrounded, so Lu Bu went up to White Gate Tower viewing platform and told his men, Cao Tao has no intention of finding trouble with you. I should surrender to the wise lord. Chen Gong said, The treacherous Cao Tao is no wise lord. Surrendering to him is like hitting a rock with an egg. How can you expect to live after you surrender? Reinforcements from Yuan Shu were wavering, so Lu Bu attempted to break out of the siege. One night, he tied his daughter to himself and rode out of the gate with some a thousand riders, but they were fired upon by archers so had to retreat back inside. The next plan was to leave Cheng Gong and Gao Shun to defend the city, whilst Lu Bu led his horsemen to attack the enemy baggage train, but before he left his wife told him, General, I know you want to attack Cao Cao's supply lines, but Cheng Gong and Gao Shun can't get along with each other. If you leave, they may not work well in defending the city. If a mishap occurs, what will become of you, General? I hope you'll consider this carefully and not be misled by Chang Gong and the others. When I was in Chang'an, you already abandoned me, but I managed to return to you because Pang Xu secretly protected me and kept me with him. You don't need to worry about me now. Lu Bu felt gloomy after listening to his wife, so he could not decide on what to do. He did not dare to venture out of Xia Pi anymore. Chen Gong convinced his lord to array the troops in such a formation that would allow for a pincer attack whilst draining the enemy's supplies. He predicted the battle would be over in 10 days, but Lu Bu's wife cautioned him. In the past, the Taos treated Chen Gong like a newborn child, but he still turned against them and joined you. Now the way you treat Gong Tai is no lesser than how Cao Cao treated him, and you intend to entrust the entire city to him, along with your family, whilst you venture out alone? Entrusting the safety of the whole city, including your highness's wives and daughters into his care, would be the worst move to make. If any eventuality occurred, I, your highness's humble wife, would not remain maidenly intact. Thus, Lu Bu changed his mind and abandoned Chen Gong's life-saving plan. The prolonged siege had its toll on both sides of the battle. Cao Tao resorted to flooding the city by redirecting the local rivers, so for three months the defenders' morale plummeted. Hu Cheng arranged to purchase 15 horses, but the trader he met decided to flee to Liu Bei instead. He gave chase, retrieved the steeds, then returned to a warm welcome at Xiaopi from many generals, who presented him with gifts. 
They threw a banquet to celebrate, where Hu Cheng presented food and wine to Lu Bu, who reacted furiously. I banned alcohol, but you and the others dare to throw a party? Are you plotting with them to kill me? Shocked, Hu Cheng immediately left. Tired with their lord's treatment, Hu Cheng, Song Xian and Wei Xu captured Cheng Gong and Gao Shun, and led their troops to surrender to Cao Cao. When they saw that they had been surrounded, Lu Bu led his remaining subordinates up the White Gate Tower and surrendered. He asked his men to bring his head to Cao Cao, but he surrendered immediately after they refused. There are various recordings of the conversation Lu Bu had with Cao Cao after he was tied up and brought before him. Lu Bu asked, My lord, you've lost weight. Why? Cao Cao replied, How do you even recognise me? When I was in Luoyang, I saw you at the Wen family gardens. Cao Cao replied, Yes, I forgot. I lost weight because I'm so depressed over having not recruited you earlier. Lu stated, In the past, Duke Kuan of Xi forgave Guan Zhong for injuring him earlier and even appointed him as his chancellor. Now, is it possible for you to allow me to do my best to serve you? Tightly restrained, Lu Bu turned to Liu Bei and said, Xuan Di, you're a guest here, I'm a prisoner being tied up, why don't you say anything to help me? Cao Cao laughed and said, why'd you turn to him instead of speaking directly to me? Cao had the intention of sparing Lu Bu, so he ordered his men to loosen the bonds. However, Wang Bi, a registrar under Cao Cao, interrupted. Lu Bu is a powerful foe and his allies are nearby, he shouldn't be spared. Cao Cao then said to Lu Bu, I wanted to spare your life, but my registrar says no, so what should I do? Lu Bu was executed by hanging alongside Chen Gong and Gao Shun. This may not have been a typical hanging being suspended from a point, but could have been death from strangulation. Lu Bu, Chen Gong and Gao Shun's dead bodies were decapitated, and their heads were sent to the capital Shu where they were buried. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.